Hello everyone, my name's Tris and this is Double O'Neill. This, <laughs> I seem to say this every episode, this episode is probably one of my favourite episodes. And I think it's because you're always working towards a goal and it's to get some bits finished from time to time. And on the layout I've been working on what was the polystyrene kind of back scene parts to go with the back scene board. And that's been absolutely brilliant and I've loved it because I've been making some progress over the past two weeks and we're going to talk about that a bit more in a minute but the process of the plaster bandage, sculptor mould, static grass work, putting it on the layout, it's brilliant, absolutely love it and I've had the most fun uh, mix of satisfaction for, for a while. I thought in the last episode I'd got that and yeah, you keep going more and more towards what you want and I can't wait to show you all of this having the little running shots of the engines coming past and having a bit more of a vision of how it's going to look once it's finished because before I thought oh, it'd be cool because of this and this but once you get a bit of colour onto it you know before it's kind of grey some some browns and some whites kind of on the on the surfaces now I have greens and blues and all these wonderful colours going on so what we'll do is we'll go straight up into let's say we're going to start in the loft and we're going to then probably move down to the kitchen and do some stuff so let's pop up there and have a look at what we're doing and crack on from there using polystyrene that was left over from the loft when i was insulating it i thought well i can use this as i did on the previous video i was running out of pieces but i found bits and bobs that i'd kept from when i was Kind of getting let's say a new bed or you know all these bits and bobs of packaging that we normally think oh, I'll just throw it away I wish I kept a little bit more of it now because I could do with it anyway here is the rod which looks like a little lightsaber kind of um, cutting through the polystyrene it's an attachment to the hot wire tool that I got for cutting the foam and that's what I got on Amazon at the time as I was about on the last video but it's just a very common one you see on there works really really well it plugs into the mains and it cuts through as you can see here that's just the thinner wire one there and after that as you can imagine you know you're you're after a certain shape and you cut it out it's very very simple and you work your way through the hot wire I always appreciates if you go up and down actually because obviously the bit that you're cutting with cools down from what it's touching so if you can do some kind of saw in action then it allows you to, to get through it a bit quicker but as you saw on the previous episode if you haven't already checked that out check it out you just build it up build up your contours don't worry about too much if oh, but it hasn't got quite the right shape here because you can fix it after with um, plaster bandage or whatever just a reminder, I've got a bit of protection on there um, with my uh, mask there. It's uh, very, very good. Um, obviously, it does restrict the breathing a little bit, so you do get quite warm in the face when you're doing all this, um, but I know it's good for my health. But I cut all the pieces out, as you can see, and then I add little contours now. So I'm getting rid of those sharp edges, so I'm adding a chamfered edge. And running that little hot wire across, I can start kind of creating what will be the the end shape of it but I will be like I said be adding um, plaster bandage um, to all of this and yeah you can see I'm creating an, an embankment here so I need to glue these together and what I do is I mainly focus on the back of the area because I'm going to be cutting it with the hot wire again once it's all together if there's glue there it won't cut through the glue so I glue all these bits on and let that dry for a little bit and whilst that was drying I created some of the other little bits here once that's done I just give it a little bit more of a trim to kind of make them one piece to take away some of the work that I'm gonna have to do later kind of the better you get this I guess the less you have to do for some of the sculpting but I'm gonna have to add quite a bit of sculpt to mold and plaster bandage to get the embankment shape that I want but this gets me let's call it 80% the way there now I thought I'd speed it up for the sake of seeing the last couple of bits and bobs that I've done. You've seen it all in the last episode when I did the other hilly areas and embankments. And what I want to do is create a big kind of hill section on this section of the railway. Um, because I want the 
where the video yard is, I want that line to kind of come out of a either a hillside um, or, you know, like there, we could have something making it more like a tunnel, but haven't decided yet. So I thought I'd build up these two bits and leave it open to adding bits later. I guess you can see what I'm trying to do there. But once that was all done, take the mask off, take it downstairs and we'll go into the kitchen. Now this is going to be a very, very messy step, all of it, with the static grass, painting, plaster bandage and sculptor mould. So putting a sheet down from B&Q, I think it cost a couple of pounds, I can cover my kitchen table and keep things nice for the whole duration of this process. So I'm getting out my plaster bandage, this was from Hobbycraft, I ordered it online, they're a pound each, I ordered it enough. Um, to kind of look at the postage was four pounds so I ordered kind of 14 of these just to kind of divide that postage cost into it. Cutting out lots and lots of strips I had to do a lot of these strip cuttings um, because there was quite a few bits of um, hillside embankments that I had to get done and as you've probably seen in many videos of seeing people using plaster bandage you dip it in the water you soak it for a moment, it's all wet and you, you can kind of lay it over the top to start creating what you're after. You can stretch it across gaps, you can make it fit contours tightly if you really want to. So I tuck it underneath and it sticks really, really well. And I just keep laying it over all the different pieces and you can start really seeing what you want. I go at various angles to try and see if I can stretch it in different ways. Sometimes when you go straight down, you don't get what you're after. And you just keep going and going and going and keep cutting, laying, cutting, laying. And once it's all done, you just need to let it dry. Let it dry fully. And to be honest, you get a feel for it. So once this is done, you pick it up and you can feel the weight of it with all that water in. And then it gets lighter as it dries. You can see here, I'm just smoothing the edges in because this will eventually get painted my Hornby Magazine Grey, I like to call it. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I just want this to have a reasonably smooth edge. I'm not going to do anything to it later. And I just make sure I don't have any weird ripples in here. Not that you're really going to see once you've got the plaster, um, the plaster on. Well, you've got the plaster on, it will hide it. But the static grass will hide a lot as well. So the, I think it was like a two-part mix that you got 50-50. But I felt from my working out, I need a little bit more of the uh, the sculptor mold. The sculptor mold is quite common within the uh, community. Um, I see quite a lot of people using it. This is actually my first time. So I'm going to mix it until I felt it's got the right kind of consistency. Um, and it's just like plaster and strip tissue paper it seems like um, that's in there and it goes off in kind of half an hour to a certain firmness but then takes about two to three days to dry it feels on the on the thicker bits which is understandable the water needs to disappear so I kind of put these uh, close to radiators to try and really get the moisture back out of them let it dry off nicely. So you apply it to all the different ones, you can see what I'm doing, I'm making a shape with this sculptor rock, or sculptor mould it is, sorry not sculptor rock, and there's various people that produce different ones out there, and all I do is, after a certain amount of time with a wet finger, I can dip it in here, I kind of smooth it all over, and you can start getting, you know, these be nice surface to work with, it seems more like what would be soil. After that I paint it with that wonderful burnt umber. Um, I have some different ones I'm going to mix them together and we just paint it. It's brown and the reason I believe we do this is because we don't always get the static grass everywhere we want it to and there are edges that actually would be nice to have that soil poking through. So you have the soil opposed to the white plaster look and unless grass um, grows on clay I think this is the right colour to paint underneath. So I give it a paint, obviously this colour is a bit thin, I watered it down a bit too much there, but it's fine, I really think it's fine. After that we put 2mm static grass on, I've gone for the stuff by Pico here, not out of lots of choices, I just had some, so I'm using it, it's 2mm, and I'll coat all of them with this first. And the WWS applicator that I'm using, I got it a long time ago, it's been good so far, I haven't had to change the battery, still working well, I load it up inside of here. I only have one um, attachment with one type of grate on top and then after that we put on the, the glue, it's like a, I think it's like a latexy PVA gluey thing, it's kind of stretchy when it dries in your fingers and you have to peel it off, it's kind of sticky even after it's dried, um, that's one thing that I found from it, but I basically kind of paint it over with a paintbrush 
Uh, I know you can use PVA glue in various things. Um, there's probably many, many products that allow this to be glued down. But this is what I'm using and it works a treat. And after that, I touch the crocodile clip on, I turn it on by the switch and I give it a little shaky shake and it goes on. And you can spend ages on one little bit if you want, but I always like to try and get the whole area first and then I can keep going backwards and forwards over it if I feel I haven't quite reached the density that I'm after. I work all the different areas, so repaint and then we do the static grass. And you can see it's a uh, keep repeating until you've done all your different bits. And uh, yeah, take some time, but it actually is really enjoyable. You're starting to bring a lot of colour to the layout, and that for me is quite wonderful. You're starting to realise, oh, this is going to look great. You'll see in my Instagram channel, I was kind of posting up my stages of doing this, and honestly, it was really enjoyable. And this is quite late. I got back from work quite late that night, and oh, I'm going to continue doing this. After that, I went for six mil next and you're probably thinking why not four mil or something like that but I went for six mil because then I put four mil on after that and one of my main things is whenever I put six mil on it feels like it's dominating it and it's just long grass I don't really like that and maybe people already do this but I didn't enjoy it when I did it on my 009 layout where I had so much kind of long grass just being the dominant factor so I put the six mil on now then after that I'm going to be putting my four mil on and so that means that it goes in between the gaps on the six mil and you have little pokey bits sticking out and it starts to have a real nice dense texture really i kind of like it because when i'm looking at my garden right now you look at the grass and you have very lengths showing through whereas i find that sometimes you can have a bit of a too much of a uniform look to it when you do it so Obviously, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm playing, I'm learning. But you can see here, it's looking nice and fluffy, but it's not all just one length. Um, it's a very nice, varied amount coming through there, and it looks nice and fluffy, just like some grass that you see in a field. Um, here, actually, the, the light picks out the light colours, but actually on the layout, it looks a lot more green. But I'm really honestly pleased with it, and I'm looking forward to getting hold of some more colours. But it's good it's better than I thought it would look and to be honest it's adding color to the layout which is the most important bit for me if I'm honest I just wanted to start bringing it up and blending that back scene into things laying it on yeah draft the bits uh, I will obviously blend this into the gray at some point I need to be putting ballast on and all these other bits but it gives me a bit of hope gives me a bit of progress that when I want to play trains and when my logo is round I've got something enjoyable to look at. So what do you think? I'm pleased with it and I can't wait to do more more running around there. I took the day off work today, this is when I'm filming it, it's a Friday and it'll be next Thursday when I bring this video out and I had so much fun, I was out there for hours running different locos around and just watching and ogling all the different views um, at first of all what I could film from and just what I can watch from it was really enjoyable, I had my headphones on, listened to music and it was honestly really therapeutic um, you know, you have busy days at work, you get home sometimes you just want to chill out but what I'm thinking about now is getting back up into the loft and, and running the locos round and just having some fun with my 94 class coming out from behind the um, back scene. That looked cool as it, you know, it pops out there. And then just the locos running backwards and forwards. And you would have spotted a few things on some clips that I've already had up. And you'll see that I had some of the Hornby four wheel coaches going around of the Great Western livery. I picked them up at the same time as I got the LSW, no, LS, LB and SCR um, coaches. And yeah, really pleased with them. I've seen that Hattons also um, have some coming out. Obviously, I've seen it for a while. So I'm looking forward to getting some of them and they can all complement each other. And I can have lots of these slightly different looking coaches with each other, but all part of the Great Western Railway. So that's really, really good fun. This last week, um, I was able to get hold of some wagons as well as a pannier tank engine which is my 57 which has been rocking around the railway if you follow me on instagram if you don't already and you have instagram and you fancy following me just look up oo neil 
you'll find the channel and you'll really see a day by day account of what I'm getting up to, having fun with bits on the layout and various other things and projects I'm up to. So these wagons, they are special to me for two reasons. They're from a member of the Model Railway Club. I was able to get hold of them and they're from Reading and they really are kind of from Reading. Uh, Jim, who I got them from, and he was part of the club down in, I guess, Reading and it's got um, the Loddon Vale MRC, which I guess is the Model Railway Club that he was part of. And there's all these wagons that have been made for the Model Railway Club, which is wonderful. They're being done by West Wales Wagon Works. So that's cool. And they're all various limited edition ones. So I've got some Reading wagons, which is where I'm from, going around my layout, which is really cool, you know, having Reading on them. And you'll see them um, go around and I think they look great and if I ever see any more I'm gonna pick some more up so really really pleased with that uh, also the 57 class it was DCC um, but I've taken out the chip and put the blanking plug in to run on my normal line um, partly because I don't want to have to put um, DCC on my analog lines just yet but what I'm gonna be doing is getting some plugs that are this kind of the same uh, I'll put a label on them and I'm gonna swap it over the different ones but haven't got to that stage yet I'm not too worried um, what's running what um, but it wasn't DCC sound so it was just be running DCC so we'll have that smoother running on takeoffs and pullaways but I generally have them looping around constantly I don't really do any shunting at the moment it's not really a thing that I do but you know from time to time I might do that but yeah so that's great so the 57 it runs actually really really well um, really pleased with it because I've got my 64 class I think that's the, that's what it is the my other pannier that I have and they're both backmen so I did some double heading work um, and yeah it looks brilliant going around so actually just take a couple of uh, uh, minutes to, or a few seconds or whatever some clips um, and look at it going around So yeah, the 57, it's beautiful. I've always wanted one. They've got the little round windows on the cab, whereas the 64 has the more squarish ones. And so I really like that. And as well as when you look at the top of the Loco, there's some different detail works going on. I actually damaged it getting out of the packet and knocked one of the bits. So I've had to glue that back together, but I don't think you'll spot that. I think it's one of the handles that will open up so then they can open up the, the water cap and put the water in the pannier tanks so yeah that was really really cool to have that and really enjoyable having them double heading round i had i think it was seven coaches putting it along well they were putting along seven coaches and actually the seven coaches was about as long as one side of my railway um but it was really cool really enjoyable to have them doing that and i swapped things around doing different bits and bobs as you'll see on the different clips got my 1366 pulling around my um four wheel uh, coaches by Hornby so really pleased with them I wanted to talk about three channels three um, that I wanted to mention uh, 
one which is quite a new channel his name is rob arnold and rob's probably watching right now thinking oh what are you doing um and he's currently on five subscribers and i really enjoy these on four videos so far he may have done more by the time this is released and they're actually very wonderful i've been enjoying them he has nice music going on and he's had various different ones so check out rob's channel there is another rob arnold on there with a guitar that's not rob um but you'll see right here this is rob's page look it up have a little watch subscribe even if you like it um, but i always enjoy watching them and he's been a, a long time channel there channel follower so yeah check that out the next one is benton road model railway and uh, young jack's been um always on my channel obviously commenting has always been uh, very polite and has been getting into um, 3d drawing and um, printing and even sent me um, some files to print I haven't done anything with them yet because i was kind of waiting for a time to kind of to print them off showcase them with something and i don't think they quite fit on my layout yet but maybe in the future but yeah check out his channel he's done a few videos now and he's got a number of subscribers but i think we can bump them up as well um because you know a lot of people have a lot of passion it's always enjoyable to see what people are enjoying doing themselves and we all want to be part of that and support each other so yeah the last channel is um i've written it down because he's it's not long but it's tim's trains modeling and adventures and tim does lots of live streams and some people don't always enjoy live streams but i find tim does it with a difference every night at 8 30 um i don't know if it's seven days a week but most days a week he does a live stream and it's a case of where he's he's building up a part of his modular railway sections and one week he'll be working on a trestle bridge next bit he's doing a cave um entrance or a tunnel entrance whatever but he builds everything by hand um he does have some kits but everything's all scratch built with using match sticks and cocktail sticks whatever and he's done some fantastic work and i just wanted to also bump his channel up he's been doing really really well with everything you know he's got quite a few subscribers but i think that you know some people probably haven't seen what he's doing and i really recommend going over to tim's channel and watching that as well anyway again a huge thank you to all my subscribers um i am really enjoying seeing that the channel grow it gives you a lot of enthusiasm to keep going and building the channel and uh that's been um yeah for me uh, really wonderful and really appreciated all the wonderful comments i get a lot of support from my patrons so thank you to you all um but i've been also asked to open up the channel memberships to the channel um and that's basically a bit like what patreon can do um and i can allow um if you decided to join there's three tiers on there that i have um the ability to share with you my videos a bit earlier um, it means that you can do it all within YouTube you don't have to go to a separate thing like patreon if you don't want to um, so I'm gonna listen to a few of you and thought fine I'll open it up it's been available for some time to be able to do it but I've never got around to, to doing it because I had my patreon but some of you don't want to do that which okay fine I understand um, but some of you do want to do the the channel membership so I just want to um, let you know I've opened that up you can hit join there's three tiers see I appreciate whatever you want to do uh, if you do want to support me even if you don't want to do that just hit me a comment like and subscribe share um, it all helps the channel grow um, and it's something I want to do more and more and do more to do of the model railway world so the support just allows me to do that that bit more um, one thing that I'll be able to do with the YouTube one I'm sorry if this upset some of my Patreon supporters, um, but it, I can set up member only live streams. And so I'll be able to have them going whilst I'm, I was thinking when I'm doing something for a video, um, I can flick on the camera, we can have a chat whilst I, you know, it's kind of behind the scenes stuff, like I said, and we can have some fun with that. So that's gonna be live now, you'll be able to join and yeah look forward to chatting to you um, there um, becoming a member supports me as well as hopefully i can do something a bit for you guys and give you some bit more enjoyment um, with all the bits and bobs that i get up to as well as future projects i might be doing as well so anyway as always thank you so much and 
I've really enjoyed doing this and I hope you enjoy watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Like, really do take care of yourselves. It looks like we're coming out of all this craziness slowly, bit by bit. Um, that's in the UK anyway. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all at a model railway one day. Not model railway, a railway one day, model railway show. And yeah, anyway, goodbye.